Welcome back to the old Iron Lever channel. My name is Bob and this is the Bending Brake Project. In this segment we're going to cover making the rear eccentric, which is a shaft right here with an offset to drive this uh, the bottom of this clamping arm in and out. In this video and episode 9 I encountered some vi audio problems that uh, should be corrected after the next episode. Um, thank you for bearing with me and uh, I'll try to do better. So let's start looking at the drawing going from left to right. The big boss on the left end 875 is for the uh, rear hinge bore. Then there's that little thin piece that acts kind of like a washer and then the uh, next piece to the right is a uh, kind of an arbitrary bore for the handle to fit. You can see a little socket there in it. And then the uh, the last bore or last uh, turn on the right, a 750 bore or uh, is a 750 bore for the, uh, uh, the eccentric. It fits into the uh, lower end of the clamp lever. Here we're using the four jaw chuck so we can facilitate turning uh, the offset uh, later on. We'll go to the we'll, we'll face off and then we'll go to the uh, largest diameter, which is that little washer looking piece on the uh, shoulder on the. Uh, kind of to the left. That shoulder and a washer on the outside of the end of the piece are going to be to sandwich that hinge uh, and locate it on the end of this shaft. Now we're mostly cleaning the rust off but we are turning to the inch and three sixteenths diameter called for for the, uh, the big diameter of that shoulder and that's that's the largest diameter on the whole piece so I turn it to that and then each other part I turn consecutively smaller. Sped it up to kind of get rid of the boring parts without getting rid of the boring parts. Now we're going to turn the next uh, diameter, which is the uh, the one that the handle fits on. In this kind of operation where I'm turning to a shoulder, I like to turn uh, all my rough cuts down just short of the, the final length of cut. And uh, when I get the, the finishing pass on the diameter, I also do the finishing pass on the shoulder. So this is the last pass that so we're going to turn right up to the final shoulder uh, position too. And uh, so we'll stop the diameter turn and we'll um, come off of that and right up to the outside edge. So the next diameter we're going to turn is the uh, offset piece. And we're using the four jaw to dial in one set of jaws uh, 050 off. Off of the uh, off a of square, <laughs> off a of centered. Probably won't win any uh, four jaw competitions at the bar Z, at least not right away. But I eventually get it dialed in.
Okay, we're getting set up to turn that eccentric. And right now we're getting the travel dial set up to get the, uh, the position of the end of the cut where we want. kind of sneaking up on it here. I could have uh, accurately measured the bore and used the micrometers on the on the diameter here to get it right without overshooting it. Uh, but I just use the calipers to get close and then I'll uh, hand fit it right to the, the uh, hole in the, uh, the clamp arm. Yeah, there I am filing. It'll be a, a fair amount of filing. I stopped maybe a little short, but I guess that's better than stopping too late with the lathe turning it. So we'll just keep taking a thousandth or so off until we get real close. Get it where the end of that let clamp lever just slides on. Some of you are thinking, well, maybe he just likes to file. Well, I don't really like to file, but I also don't like making parts twice. Well, look at there, I finally got it. Okay, now we parted it off and uh, changed out the four jaw for the uh, call it holder and switch the, flip the part in for end. So now we're working on the big end that goes in the, the um, rear hinge. We're going to turn it up to that eighth inch wide shoulder and that shoulder should be kind of close because it kind of it helps set the, the, the location from side to side of all the components that hook to it. And uh, if you don't get it you know, reasonably close, you're going to introduce binding in hood. Now the end of this shaft will be bored and threaded for a half inch bolt that will hold a big washer on the end of it. So the, the hinge will be sandwiched between that, that uh, shoulder we're getting turning up to here and that washer. So it's going to be left a little bit long so it has a little bit of play. Uh, nothing's going to be, you know, super tight right there. Getting the travel dial set up again to, so I get the length of that cut right where I want it. Or at least I can see where I am. Like on the other end, we're going to turn this end down to fit the uh, the actual bore of the rear hinge. You know, and you can do this all dead accurate, but the diameters aren't important as long as they're a good fit. So it's probably just as good that I hand fit everything. Back up to fast forward just to uh, see see everything, but you don't have to sit there and wait for it all.
Look at that, just smooth. I'm going to face it off to the final length. I'm just going to leave it just, like I say, a ten thousandths long or so to give me, you know, a little bit of play in the slip fit there. And we drilled it, and now we're tapping for a half inch 13 for the uh, bolt that will hold the retaining washer. I'm using the nose of my drill chuck to kind of keep the tap square. Uh, haven't had real good luck on the bigger taps wrestling around with them on the tap follower, follower I have. It's, it, they tend to pop out from underneath the tap follower. This works a little better for me. Maybe I should get one of those heavy-duty tap followers we saw at the Bar-Z Industrial Bash, the Bar-Z Summer Bash, um, last June. They are much bigger and got a nice healthy spring on them. I like to get the last, every, every last little bit of thread I can out of it. So next we're going to mill that uh, little recess in there for the handle. And we want the, the handle to be timed with the uh, cam so that it's on the high spot on the cam. And uh, what I did is I put a, a collet block in there and uh, set the pin in it just a little bit loose so I could turn it. And then uh, put my dial indicator on it and, and turned it back and forth until I felt like I had as close as I could to the the uh, high spot right dead in the middle of the jaws of the vise there. A little repetitive here, sorry about that. You can fast forward it for a little bit. I've got it to where that's the best I can find a high spot there. I'm going to tighten up the, the collet on the, or the collet block on the collet. Now we're going to touch off on the two sides of the vise and get uh, the uh, that use the DRO to get center. I probably would have used my edge finder if I could have found it. The wriggler's fine. It kind of serves the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Zero out the DRO. And move to the other side. Kick it a little off center. Oop, I meant a little off-center. There we go. A little bit of wiggle to it. Bring it in until the wiggling all stops and it just starts to kick out of, out of alignment back to a little wiggle again. Now we 
I set the center function on the DRO. Turn the set the y-axis to zero, and we're dead center on the y-axis. And we're going to touch off uh, with that edge finder again, or that wiggler again, on the end of the uh, um, piece, and then take the, the measure we want, we want on the x-axis to get centered on the place where we're going to uh, drill or bore that little, uh, that little recess for the handle to fit in. Just dialing the X in it relative to the end of the piece. Okay, now we've got a center cutting end mill in there and just uh, cranking up on the knee. I've got the, the manual crank on the, uh, the knee drive shaft. That's it. There's the whole part all done. Thanks for visiting the old Iron Lover channel and the series on the uh, building of the bending brake. There are a number of episodes in this series, so please uh, check back regularly. I'll try to post them uh, about twice a week until they're all up, uh, assuming I can keep up with the editing. So um, if you uh, like it, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to make a comment that you think I'd like to hear, well, please add that. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, that's always welcome too. Please subscribe. Until uh, the next episode, happy trails.